Know Christ, a television ministry of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Here's your host, Rev. Jeff Peterson. Well, today our topic for the Bible study is Jesus being the light of the world. And so I'm going to read from John chapter 8, verses 12 through 20. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. <clears throat> you judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father. Jesus replied, If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the synagogue area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. How exciting. I am the light of the world. I mean, light is so powerful. I mean, it was one of the very first things that God created was light. You know, if we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, uh, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And, and light separated the day from the darkness of the night. And so as we think about light, yeah, light determines a day. That as the sun rises, our day begins, and our day ends as the sun sets. Well, for the most part. But we see that light is very important in, in creation. That light brings life. I mean, the power of light as far as heat and and as far as energy goes, you know, as light shines upon creation, it comes to life. And I think about plants and how they have their leaves in the photosynthesis and how uh, the plants are able to take the light and, and to be able to transform it into food and energy. Recently, I was on a trip to Norway, and I've heard a lot about, well, being up further north during the summertime, that you don't get a whole lot of night. And so I got to a place uh, that was further up north in, in Norway, and I was just kind of wondering, I was curious, because the night before, as I was in a hotel, and, and then as I got up and ate breakfast, I was visiting somebody who was from Sweden. And he was telling me that there was a time where he lived up in Lapland, and he said that during the summer, he says, you see the midnight sun. In other words, the sun doesn't set. And he said that, you know, it would energize you with the sun being out all the time. It would energize you, meaning that you just didn't need a whole lot of sleep. And so here again, I was kind of curious. And as I was at that one community way up, you know, up further, not way up at the top of Norway, but, but up there, you know, quite a ways that I was kind of curious. I wanted to stay up until midnight just to see if the sun was shining, but you know, it got to be about 10, 10.30, and I was done for the day, and I ended up falling asleep. But I woke up at, it was 12.30. And just out of curiosity, I went over to the window, and I opened up the shade, and as I looked up at the sky, the sky was still blue. I mean, I couldn't see the sun, but there was still a light sky. And so I thought, now there is at least sunshine at 12.30 in the middle of the night. When we think about light, you know, as far as creation, 
We think about all of the power and the energy that light gives, but how practical light is, and that because of light we can see. You know how frustrating it would be is that if we never had any light, we wouldn't be able to get around. You know, how would you go about your day if you didn't have light? What would you be able to accomplish? I remember living in a community that was hit by a tornado. All the electricity was down for, for a few days. And during the day, the sun was out and we could work. I mean, oh, when, you're hit, when your community gets hit by a tornado, it is really a mess. There's lots of work to be done as far as uh, cleanup and rebuilding. But during the day, we could get a lot of work done. But as soon as the sun would go down, it's really something where there's just no light. I mean, there's no street lights, there's nothing but just black. It's, it's just pure darkness. And I don't, can't tell you how many times where I would, you know, walk into the house or walk into a room and just naturally I would turn on the light switch and nothing would happen. It's just like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, all of the, the light, you know, all the electricity is off. And so eventually I would fumble around and get a candle and light a candle. So at least there was a little bit of light in the house. But I just remember how when the sun would set and as darkness would come, it would just put, it, it would put the whole community at a standstill. I mean, our work was over for the day. But as soon as the sun would shine in the morning, it's like, oh, now we can see, now we can get out there, we can... We can get work just saying this. It's just like sun is so valuable. Light is so valuable. I mean, if we had to buy light like that during the day, having the sun shine, I can't imagine how much it would cost. How thankful that this is a gift of God's grace, that the sun shines, that the sun shines upon our fields, upon our lawns, upon our trees, and upon our lives, and so that we can see to get work done so Sometimes it's easy to just to take for granted all of God's creation and all of what God has given to us and what a miracle it is. But when you lose it, then you know the value of it and how God has created us to be co-creators and that God helps us to basically now create what he has already created, for instance. And so we're thankful for Thomas Edison. We're thankful for light bulbs and electricity. And so that... Well, most often, except for maybe a few nights in my life where I get hit by a tornado, that I can go into a room and I can turn on the switch and I've got light. I've got light for the room. I can do whatever I want. I can uh, have light to read a book and a light to go about my business. Unfortunately, we've got lights, headlights in our cars so we can even drive at night. We've got street lights. And so light, you know, something how God has given to us light and how we now have been able to, you know, be able to harness uh, the energy of electricity and to be able to have light on. You know, it's just really a phenomenal thing. And so light is part of creation. But as I think about God's people and how they were in the wilderness for, for 40 days, or excuse me, uh, for, for 40 years. They were in the wilderness, wandering around. And we always hear, you know, Jesus is the, the, the bread of life. And that, of course, that was always something where we draw from the time when God would bless his people with manna. And manna was the bread that rained down from heaven that they would collect to be able to eat. And then Jesus, then when he came, he says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst, meaning that in Holy Communion you receive me, you receive as you receive the bread, as you receive the wine, that you receive my very body, that you receive my very blood. You know, saying that the whole manna experience that you had in the wilderness has now come to a whole new level as far as now being able to not just be nourished physically, but now being nourished spiritually is that God has given to you something that the world cannot produce. It's something that humanity cannot uh, produce. And that is the salvation life of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And that's the thing about humanity. And I must say that I'm one who applauds humanity as far as inventions go. I use the inventions of humanity. Here again, God has created us to be co-creators so that we can invent things to help us in our lives. I enjoy my computer. I enjoy my automobile. I enjoy all so many different things. But, you know, is there anything that, you know, sometimes we just take things for granted, like we get into our car and we're driving around. But to think about that, how we can drive and get to places that otherwise, can you imagine how long it would take us to get to places? And that we wouldn't get as much done if we didn't have our automobiles or even with our computers now and how we can get so much done because of our computers. But the one thing that just continues to amaze me, no matter how many times I see it, no matter how many times I, f I ride in one of these machines, it never ceases to amaze me, and that is the airplane. I just can't get over that. I mean, I see this big, heavy, uh, this whole machine that flies up into the air. And as I'm in an airplane and how we can be flying, you know, some, you know, over 30,000 feet and that jet's going like 600 miles an hour and how they can take off and fly, you know, halfway around the world before it needs to be fueled and how, how it lands and, and it's really safe travel and how you can get places in a hurry on a plane. I just can't, I just can't get over it. And so I, was so I remember being in Amman, Jordan, getting onto an airplane just, and I sit in the airplane, you know, basically on, you know, taxiing as the sun set. And I just thought, once this plane takes off, we're going to fly back into the day. And that we will catch up to the sun, that we will fly back into the sun and so the sun set, and it was just moments after it set that we took off. And even though this plane was flying hundreds of miles an hour, we could not catch the sun. You know, there's times where I think that we as humanity, that we have mastered the universe, that we have mastered creation. I mean, look at now we got a plane where we can fly past so many time zones, that we can fly into a different day. But yet that plane could not catch the sun. And that's when I realized that the creation of God, that this earth is moving faster than what any plane that we can invent can catch up with. And that's when I'm in the awe of God to say your creation is way beyond anything that we can master. And so as I think about light and how the speed of light and how fast light Travels, And I used to know just how fast it would travel because in our church we would have science professors who would tell me how fast light would travel. But, but light travels so fast. It even travels faster than, than the speed of sound. And so it's like when light shines, it's just it's instant. It's, it's just there in, in a moment. And so as I think about the power of light is that and I look at the power of darkness, that when I think about darkness, as darkness is in the world, when you look at darkness, is there anything that is more powerful than darkness other than light? And so with the absence of light, is there anything that you can use to get rid of darkness? I mean, we can punch at darkness and it's not going to flinch. We can try to wash darkness away with our most powerful detergents and and spray it away, but it doesn't, it doesn't even, it doesn't affect it at all. You know, I think about how we can try to suck darkness out with a strong vacuum cleaner, and, and that doesn't work. But yet, we can light a match in the middle of a dark night, and all of the darkness of the night cannot consume or put out that little light. That's the power of light. And it's the one power that is stronger than darkness, and that is light. And how thankful we are for light. And as we read in Psalm 27, verse 1, 
You know, we read that where the psalm writer says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Light and life. Light and uh, salvation are synonymous. And so whenever you hear like light, that represents life. And so like when you read that passage, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Then what he's saying is that the light has come and that the light is salvation. And so when Jesus says that I am the light of the world, what he's saying is that I am your salvation. I'm the light that shines. He's the morning star. You know, the morning star, that's the, the last star that continues to shine in, you know, just before the sun comes out and it's bright. And, and so Jesus oftentimes is referred to being the morning star. It's the light that shines the longest, and it's the light that shines the brightest. But being that Jesus is our light and our salvation, whom shall we fear? And because Jesus is the light, he's our strong home, whom shall we be afraid? And so, there's lots of fears out there. And I'm not trying to say, well, what is our greatest fear? You know, our greatest fear would be death. But what are people afraid of? You know, most kids are afraid of it, and a lot of adults are afraid of it. It's the dark. And I think it's because when we are in the dark, we can't see. We can't see in front of our faces. And so we fear. We fear, you know, just all kinds of things. We fear about maybe stumbling over something, uh, tripping over something, falling off of a cliff. We don't know who's in our presence in the darkness. When we can see, we can see who's all around us. You know, it's just part of our, our human nature is that we are always being able to look. And we are at ease when we can see that there's no danger around us. We're not going to fall off of a cliff and there's nobody or anything in our presence that's going to harm us when it's dark. We don't know. We don't know if there's somebody who's lurking around. And so even though a lot of times these are all just a lot of false fears that we imagine in our minds that, you know, is the boogeyman going to pop out? And so when we think about Jesus being the light of the world, that he is the one who dispels our fears. Perfect love casts out all fear. And so that's the love that the Father has given to us, and that he has given to us Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ, his, that his life, his life shines within us, and that we are given salvation. And so as I was talking about the wilderness... And that God gave the bread of life, and that Jesus is the bread of life, that when God's people were in the wilderness, another thing happened is that God led his people throughout the wilderness for, for those 40 years. And how did he lead them? Well, during the day it was by a cloud, and by night it was a pillar of fire. A pillar of fire. And so that's a lot of what Jesus is drawing, saying that, you know, you, that my people, that, that your ancestors experienced the guiding of God by a pillar of light during the night. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus is saying that I am that pillar of light. And so being that Jesus is that pillar of light, that he is your light. He is our life, our salvation. And so what does that mean? Is that when we look at darkness, darkness represents the powers of sin, the powers of, of the devil, the powers of death. I mean, these are the things that we ultimately fear. But Jesus comes as the light that dispels this darkness. And so when we look at Jesus being the light that dispels the darkness of our sin, that Jesus died on a cross for our sins, and he gives us the promise. You know, as we read in 1 John chapter 1, uh, verses 8 and 9, that we hear those words that, that, in, that in Jesus there is no 
there is no deceit, there is no lying. But that if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. That is the promise that our Lord gives to us. That as we confess our sins, that he promises to forgive our sins. It's like the light shining in the darkness and dispelling it. It's no longer there. That as far as the east is from the west, uh, no longer do your sins exist anymore. And so we confess our sins. We confess our sins daily, knowing that as we do, that our sins are forgiven. That, that Jesus dispels death. You know, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is oftentimes referred to as being the resurrection chapter. And Jesus is risen from the dead. You know, over 500 people have witnessed Jesus as being risen from the dead. And that Jesus is the first fruits of them that sleep. Meaning that as you are in Jesus Christ, that you will be raised as well. And so as we think about what is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with the 51st verse, where the Apostle Paul says, Lo, I, I tell you a mystery that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. You know, death is quite a mystery. You know, what happens in that moment when a person is alive and all of a sudden there's no longer a heartbeat? What takes place? That's the big mystery that we have. But, you know, the Apostle Paul says it's no longer a mystery. I'm sharing what happens. Where the trumpet will sound, Jesus will come, and it'll be in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. It'll be like in the moment when the sun hits, or the light of the sun hits darkness, that it will be dispelled, that death will be dispelled, and that you will have eternal life. You know, that's the thing about creation. Once again, God, you know, we want to separate God from creation. Oh, but we don't do that. Because after all, creation is God's. And God continues to make himself, you know, he incarnates himself in Jesus Christ. And he continues to make himself incarnate in the word and in the waters of baptism and, and in, the, um, in Holy Communion and the bread and the wine. But everything about creation will certainly be a reflection upon God who has created all of creation. And that's whom we need to come to love, is that we come to love God, to have fellowship with God. You know, I hear people, you know, they just will rave about a certain, you know, paintings. You know, they will look and just say, oh, I just love Terry Redland's paintings. You know, I just love that painting. And then they begin to love Terry Redland, saying, well, he's the one who has painted all this, these beautiful paintings. Or we think about people who like certain books. You know, they, they fall in love with a, an author. They just love, oh, I, I know people who have read all of Louis L'Amour's Western books. I mean, there's so many of them, but they, I mean, I know people who have read them all. And so they fall in love with the author, just saying, oh, we just love Louis L'Amour. But that's the thing is that, oh, I love creation. I love looking at the sunset. I love canoeing down a river. Or I love walking through the woods. I love looking at the animals. Well, we need to fall in love with the one who's created it all, and that is God. And so when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's using something that he has created light to now say, I'm your light. And I'm not just giving you physical light so that you can have life here in this world, but I'm now giving you spiritual light. And it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes like fire. And the Holy Spirit is not you know, so much fire to consume us, well, to consume and to take away our sins, but to be that light that as we study the Word of God, that, that it's the light, it's the lamp that shines upon the Word of God, that as, that as we read the Word of God, it illuminates and it enlightens us so that we may have life and salvation, that we may have the eyes of faith to see. And so we're not talking about necessarily physical eyes to be able to see. I mean, I know some people who've got perfect eyesight, but they don't see God. I know some people who are blind, but yet they've got the best sight to see God, and they see God every day. It's that the sight of our faith, and that comes through hearing the word of God, that the Holy Spirit illuminates 
you know, the word of God, that we can come to have faith and, and to have salvation in him. And so that is what the light of Jesus does, is that it dispels the darkness, it dispels death. And then also the devil. You know, the devil is quite a presence in this world. You know, people really, I see people really struggling and, and floundering and tripping over, you know, as far as the existence of God. Oh, people want to believe in God. They want to believe in the existence of God. But I think it's unanimous that we all believe in the existence of evil. We all believe in the existence of the devil. I mean, how can we deny it? I mean, we see suffering and pain and sin and problems. You know, that's always the thing, is that as I'm teaching young people in class, about, well, can you make an argument for sin and the devil? I'll tell you, it takes them that long, and they've got all, you know, quite a list to say, well, yeah, here's all the evidence of the devil. But that's where we need, you know, that the light of Christ comes and shines and exposes all of the evil of the world and all the evil in our life, our own sin. But here again, you know, we try to cover it up. We try to put everything into the dark place to say, well, if I can just take my sins and the things that I like and go into my dark closet where nobody can see it, where you know, I cannot even see, see it. Well, that's where we need to, to say, well, no longer. I need to let the light of Christ shine within me and to expose this, that I can confess it, but to know that the power of God over the devil. I mean, here again, if you're thinking, oh, the devil, you know, he's got a stronghold. You know, the devil is doing this, the devil is doing that. Well, here's what you have to say. You know, as we think about what is written in James chapter 4, verse 7, we are to submit to God and we are just simply to resist the devil and he will, we, 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 he will flee from us. All we have to say in the name of Jesus Christ, devil flee. And it'll be just like light shining into the darkness. The devil is gone. The devil cannot stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just say in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, you, you, you leave me and you leave my presence and it will, and then the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts. And so Jesus is the light of the world. He's the salvation of God. Let his light shine in and through you every day. Be into God's word. Pray for the Holy Spirit, and you will be what Jesus called, this, you know, to be the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You have been watching To Know Christ with Rev. Jeff Peterson, pastor of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. For a donation of $15 or more, you can receive a copy of Pastor Peterson's latest book, A Basic Christian Theology. Thank you for watching and tune in again next week for To Know Christ.